Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Code with B. If you are a Java programmer, most often than not, you must have encountered the situation wherein you have interacted with the database. And if you are using the JPA, then you must have written down lots of entity classes or the repositories. If there are very few tables, then it is just fine to write the entity classes manually. But if there are lots of tables that you need to communicate with, in that case, if you are going to write the classes manually, then you might be wasting your time. And as a smart developer, investing your time in writing the boilerplate code is not a good idea. Agree? If you are not writing that code, who else is going to write it down for you? Thankfully, with different ID that we use for the development, there are different plugins available which can be leveraged to do this task. If you have IntelliJ IDE that is Enterprise Edison, so in that case, there are lots of plugins available. But as a developer or as a student, you might be using the IntelliJ Community Edison. So there are not lots of plugins available, but still there is one plugin, JPA support, that can be utilized to write the entity classes and the repository classes for you. So in this video, we are going to see how we can add the JPA support plugin in IntelliJ IDE and then how can we write down the entities and the repositories automatically. So instead of wasting much time, let's look at the demo wherein we will see all those stuff. To work with JPA support, first of all, we need to add the JPA support plugin. For that, we can go to the preferences and here, select the plugins and then we will select the JPA. So we don't find anything. Let's look at the marketplace. So here you can see we have lots of plugin, but we are interested in the JPA support. So let's click on this and install it. In the meantime, it gets installed. We can see what this plugin provides. So here this plugin provides the support for generation of the entity and repository for the JPA. And it supports the different databases. So let's apply it and click on OK. As soon as we have added the JPA support plugin, you will notice we have got one task here, generate JPA entities. So if we click on this, so it will open up the window wherein we have the option to provide the database connection details. This task is available from any context. So even if we have a file open and we want to generate the JPA entities, we can use the intelligent shortcut to open up the new. So in this file, we have generated the JPA entity. If I click here, I'll see the same screen. I have already applied this plugin previously. So all of the details are prefilled. I'll reset it. And this is how you will see it when you will install the plugin first time. So here it has the attributes for providing the database connection details. If you have worked with JPA or you have worked with JDBC, you know that for connecting with database, you need the driver class and the jar file for the driver. This plugin also uses the JDBC connection. So here we need to provide all of these details. In this demo, we are going to use Postgres DB. So we have to provide all the details related to the Postgres. For the Postgres DB, the driver class name is org.postgresql. driver as soon as we added this driver class it has automatically picked up the url i have downloaded the jar file for the postgres driver so let's browse it let's select the postgres sql jar now we have the driver class we have driver path and the url in url if you will notice we have post port and the database as the variable for these variable, we can provide the values here in the host, port, and the database text box. I am using the Postgres Docker instance. So instead of local host, let's pick the 0.0.0, .0 as our host IP. So this is our host, and then port is 5432. So when I change this host, it automatically reflected here. Now we need to add the password. For this demo, I have already created one database, so I'll add that. If I try to connect with the database, it will take some time to establish the connection with the database. So after 
connecting with the database, you will see there is another window popped up. In this window, you can define different settings for your entity classes and the repository classes. So here you can remove some of the prefix from the database tables. If your database table have certain kind of prefixes that you don't want in your entity classes, you can add here in the remove prefix. If you need to add some prefix in your entity class, you can add in here. Also for the suffix, you can add the suffix in the suffix text box. Similarly, for your repositories, you can add the repository suffix. You need to provide the module where your classes has to be generated. So for this example, we are picking the Java solutions module and there are some other fields. Let's look at the entity package. So here you can define the package name for your entity classes. So in this example, I have added com.press.entities. Also, you need to provide the full path of your package. Here we have the full URL of our Java solutions module and the path of the SRC main Java. Similarly, for the repositories, you can define the package name and the complete path of the package. For the basic example, if you just select the serializable and do not check any of the checkbox, let's see what kind of classes we can generate. So I'm moving on next. So this window will show you all the tables in your database. You probably need not to create the entity classes for all of these tables. So let's select none. We can specifically pick up the tables for which we need to generate the classes. So if we look at the database, so here we have this entity generation demo and we have a couple of tables such as tab underscore accounts, tab underscore address and tab underscore user. So we need to create the entities for these tables. We will pick these tables from these listing, but there are so many tables and it might be tedious to find out the table which you are interested in. So you can see here we have one of the options select by regex. So you can apply any regex and all the tables which satisfy this regex will be selected automatically. So in our case, our table start with tab underscore. So we can define the regex here such as tab and underscore and then anything followed by this tab underscore. So some of the tables are automatically selected like tab underscore accounts, tab underscore user or there must be some other table, tab underscore address. By selecting this regex, you can very easily find out your tables. And now if you look at this window, it shows you for the tab underscore address, it is going to generate the tab address class and also it will generate the tab address repository. But we haven't selected the repository, so it is going to generate only the tab address class. And if you double click on this, it will show you a screen wherein it will show all the attributes that are going to be there in your class. So for each column in the database, it has created the field and its type. If I just click on start generate, it has generated the source code. Let's look at the code, close this and this one as well. So here we have got the different classes, tab accounts, tab address and tab user. If we look into the tab accounts class, so we have got different variables. These variables represent the columns of our table tab accounts and it has the getters and setters method as well. Now, if we want to remove these getters and setters and instead use the Lombok, this is what we can add in the JPA support settings. Also, if you look at this class, it does not look like the JPA entity class because it does not have the entity annotation and the table annotation as well as the at the rate columns annotation. So we would need to add those annotations as well within this class. So let's go back to the settings and add the support for the JPA and for the Lombok. So here we will select some of the other options. We need the Lombok to be added in our classes. So let's pick the Lombok option. And also we want to add the JPA annotations. So here we can click on the generate JPA annotation. If we click on next, we will get the same window. And here again, I'll select the table that we are interested in. If you see here, we have a couple of options. If I click on ignore, then it will ignore the new changes if already the same class exists. If I select the rewrite, 
it will override the existing classes and add the new content in the class and if i select the merge it will merge both of the changes so it will have the old changes plus the new changes so our requirement is to rewrite so let's click on rewrite and if i click select start generate and let's look back again so here we have the clean class where we have the lombok annotation for the data and then we have the entity and the tables now suppose we have a requirement where we want to create the classes without this tab prefix so for that we can again go back to our generate jp entities connect the database here i can remove the prefix so let's remove this tab let's have the same options so now if you notice with the tab underscore account we have got the accounts class so if we start generating a class it will create the accounts class for us we have created the entity classes now we would also like to generate the repository classes for that if we will select the generate repository and if we generate the code so let's look at the code now we have also got the repositories so these repositories we have for the account repository address repositories and the user repositories so this is how we can generate the entity classes and the repository there is one problem with this plugin however if we just look at the tables structure we have we have this tab accounts table which has a relationship with the account user similarly we have the tab user table which has a relationship with the address table but if we look at the classes that has been generated so here address is a string so it does not define the relationship with different tables so this part you have to do manually hopefully in the future version of the jpa support plugin we might see the functionality of adding the relationship automatically but still for the scenario where we have so many tables this plugin can really be helpful so this is all about the jpa support plugin i hope for your future projects you will be utilizing this plugin to write down your entities and the repository classes if you like watching this video please press the like button subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications of my future videos thanks for watching happy coding